in this lesson we're going to learn about the commutative property, but before we really can talk about it, we need to talk about some other algebra definitions that you might not be familiar with yet. And the first one is the word variable. And a variable is just any number that we don't know. So it's an unknown number, and we usually represent that unknown number by a letter. Frequently X, but it could be Y, it could be any letter of the alphabet. And we usually do not use a multiplication sign when we multiply a number by a variable. So it's pretty common to have just the number times the variable and they're stuck together. They look like they're written next to each other and there's no multiplication symbol between them. It's just understood. So for example, 3x we understand is 3 times x but we don't write the dot or any other kind of multiplication symbol. It's just understood. Now keep in mind that we don't know how much x is. This just says 3x, or in other words, 3 times x, but there's no way to know from here how much x is. So x is unknown. So our next definition is term. Now a term is any part of an expression that's separated from the rest of the expression by addition. Here is an expression 3x plus 7 plus 4y and you can see that it's in three pieces 3x and 7 and 4y. So each of those makes a term. So there are three terms here and terms can be made of factors. So a factor is part of a multiplication. For example, if we take a look at the term 3x, we can see that it's in two pieces. The 3 and the x have to be multiplied together to make this term. Therefore, 3 is a factor and x is also a factor. And x is a variable. It's unknown. But 3 is the number in front of the variable, so it is a factor that has a special name. It's called a coefficient. The number in front of a variable is called a coefficient. So we multiply a coefficient times a variable, we get one term, usually. Now, here is the commutative property of addition. All it says is that changing the order of the terms, changing the order of addition, does not change the value of an expression. And we know this is true because we've seen things like 3 plus 5 equals 8, but we also know that if we change the order, 5 plus 3 equals 8. And also, we know that if 3 plus x equals some number, say 10, we could change the order of that and say x plus 3 also equals 10. Now in this case, I'm sure you can look at this and figure out what x would have to be. But remember, right now it's not about solving the equation. It's just about recognizing that we can write an expression in one order or another order, but either way, it doesn't change the meaning of it. It still means the same thing. Also, we have the commutative property of multiplication, which says that changing the order of the factors does not change the value of an expression. And we know this is true because we know that for example, 3 times 7 is 21, but we can also write 7 times 3 is 21. So we see that changing the order of the factors didn't change the answer. And by the same token, I can write 5 times x, but that means the same thing as if I had written x times 5. Now it's true that when I write x times 5, I tend to put that dot back in between them that means multiplication only because this is such an unusual way to write this. But actually, both of these mean the same thing and have the same value. Now, notice 
that the commutative property does not hold true for subtraction. If you've ever had a checking account, you know this is true. Because if you have, for example, $7 and you take away 5 you've got $2 left. But if you have $5 and you take away 7 you don't have $2 left. Because changing the order of the subtraction changes the answer. So we do not have the commutative property for subtraction. And the same for division. We don't have a commutative property for division. If I have $30 to divide among six people, everybody gets $5. But if I have $6 to divide among 30 people, everybody can't have $5. So these two don't say the same thing. Changing the order of division changes the answer. Changing the order of subtraction changes the answer. So now we're going to take a look at a couple of problems like you might see in the study plan or on a test. Let's use the commutative property to write an expression equivalent to each of these expressions. So I have one here that's addition and one here that's multiplication. This one says y plus 6. If I change the order of the addition, if I use the commutative property, and change the order of the addition, I'll have 6 plus y. Notice now I can't find out what y equals because I don't know what the whole thing is supposed to add up to, but all I know is that y plus 6 has the same value as 6 plus y. And down here, to write an equivalent expression for 5x, I just change the order of multiplication and make it x times 5. So for our next example, let's write an equivalent expression using the commutative property of addition. And here's our expression, 8 plus 13x. Now if we're supposed to use the commutative property of addition, let's figure out what two things are being added here. 8 is being added to 13x. So if I change the order of the addition, I'll end up with, 13x plus 8. Notice the multiplication is still in the same order that it was, but the order of the addition has been changed. So that's the commutative property of addition. Now let's write an equivalent expression using the commutative property of multiplication. So same expression to start with, but if I, if I want to use the commutative property of multiplication, I have to figure out what two things are being multiplied and I have 13 times x. So if I change just the order of the multiplication, that will leave me with 8 plus x times 13. And that's the commutative property of m multiplication.